Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the editor-at-large and co-founder of Corporate Board Member Magazine and your host for today, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We're going to be talking about a very important topic today, and that's the topic of strategy and, more importantly, the board's role in strategy. And joining me should be a familiar face. Um, and before I introduce her, let me just tell you that these surroundings here, we are coming to you from the Conference Board Studios, which is a comfortable home for us now, and uh, we want to thank them uh, for their hospitality and hosting us. So let me introduce my guest, Paula Loop, leader with PwC's Governance Insight Center. Welcome back, Paula. Hello. Nice to be here. So strategy is something that a huge board, board issue. Whenever you do your surveys, when they come back, oh, what would you like to spend more time on? It's always strategy. It's always strategy. So from a tactical point of view, um, what's changed? How are boards thinking about strategy these days? Is it still, you know, in the old days, you used to do the retreats or the yep. once a year kind of thing. Has that evolved? Uh, what do you see out there in the, in the boardrooms these days? So, yeah, we are seeing an evolution, I think, about on this. And if you, if you talk to CEOs, they're talking a lot about change and agility and all, all the things that are happening so quickly now in the world. And so um, having such a big impact on their strategy and their, um, their business models and so forth. So actually, the way the boards are looking at strategy has to change as well. I mean, we're still seeing uh, boards that are doing an annual retreat. I think that's still a great process. You can do a deep dive on certain things. Um, they're doing, uh, we're seeing more and more like education around technology and so forth that's happening at those retreats. But strategy is still continuing to be a, a topic that you're, they're embedding and infusing into all the decisions and all the thinking that the board does throughout the year. So when they're thinking about board composition, they should be, have an eye to the strategy of the company and where the company's trying to go. Same thing about talent, about obviously compensation issues, even, look at, even looking at you know, divisional results and so forth. You wanna just keep that strategy lens and everything you know, thinking about that same topic. Um, I do think that um, if something comes up during the year and somebody says we should dive deeper into that, you can't now wait and say, oh, we'll do that this summer when we do our strategy you know, offsite because there really isn't time anymore, right? The pace of change is just so quick that you've got to get on these things immediately. So um, it's caused people to think you know, more nimbly, faster, and just stay on top of it, I think, a little bit more. So um, I would think that, first of all, things that, that uh, I know the center has, has worked on, like uh, artificial intelligence yes. and digital stuff, that just expedites change significantly. So has that changed sort of what Borbs are probing into when, when you see now what they're spending their time on? Has that changed somewhat as well? Well, I think we're seeing a couple of different themes. And I would say the first one absolutely is, is around technology, digital transformation, and how all of that is going to change. It's going to change every company's business model, how they're doing things. Um, you know, CEOs are talking about wanting to provide more value at lower cost. So a way to do that is through the use of technology. So I think that is getting a lot of attention in the strategy conversations. On top of that, um, competitors are changing, right? So boards um, were used to seeing a company's traditional set of competitors, and now that's changing a lot. Industries or lines are crossing, the barriers to entry of a new space are changing. So all of that is evolving the topic, and I think you're getting more and more probing on different areas. Um, the other thing, and you did mention our annual director survey that we do, um, we do ask directors a lot about, you know, what are the areas that they are pushing back on um, in particular, and you'd be surprised the number of board members that say that they really push hard on assumptions and strategy, and maybe more surprising, the numbers that say they don't really push hard on that. So that's something that I'm assuming 
um, you know, as we continue to raise the bar on board performance, we're going to see more deeper pushback on some assumptions around the strategy model. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot, when you talk about competitors, I'm sure there was a lot of companies that didn't think that Amazon, yeah. you know, five years ago was going to be a competitor and look at, you know, I think today every company sort of raises their eyebrow on what's Amazon going to do next. Right, absolutely. And I think with the pace of change too, I think boards and management teams are starting to work better together about what kind of signposts or, or, um, or sort of like um, guidelines are we going to have along this road so that we know when we need to pivot. Because we may have a strategy that we've laid out, but we could have a competitor jump in, something new and different happen like you mentioned, and then we need to pivot, we need to change, and we need to move our strategy in a different direction potentially. So you've gotta stay more on your game, I think, now than you used to. You can't just come up with a strategy and expect it to ride it out for a while. It's, um, it's something to keep in mind, but you may have to pivot along the way. Um, that's for sure. So um, one of the big things that investors want, whenever you mention strategy to an investor, they want it to be a disclosure, okay, in the proxy. Tell us sort of your story about um, strategy, yeah. okay? Tell us something. Yeah. yeah, tell us, give us some comfort yeah. that there's, that this is where the direction is or this is where the plan is. Um, you and I have talked about this for years now and the sort of the fine line that one walks relative to that. So Larry Fink, again, in his annual letter, said, listen, we want to understand, you know, what the direction is yep. and what you can. So, um, so what are the things to consider when the board and the, and the management sitting there saying, okay, we know investors want us to talk about strategy. How do we most effectively do that? Yeah. So a couple of thoughts on that one, um, not only, you know, did Larry Fink mention that he wants to hear more about the strategy, but he also wants to hear about the board's involvement in that process, right? So that's a particular nuance that um, has come out over the last um, couple of years from in his letters. But um, I think that uh, you have to sit back and think about, we, we need to have a long-term strategy. I mean, it's all about long-term value creation, right? We don't wanna be just looking quarter to quarter. So what is that focus? And obviously there's a balance between what you can say without giving away the whole, the whole show. So I think you have to think through that with the management team. Certainly if an investor does um, engages directly with a director, that is a question they're gonna ask, because they're gonna ask that director to be able to articulate the company's strategy. They pretty much feel that if you're on the board, you ought to be able to do that. Right. So that's something that directors need to pay attention to. Um, and then I think the other lens that's starting to come up more and more is the broader risks associated with the strategy. And in particular, like ESG keeps coming out and the broader role of the corporation that Larry Fink mentions in his letter. Um, so what are the risks and opportunities related to ESG matters that the company is considering and how do you infuse those into your strategy story? So all really good questions. Um, I think things that companies um, are very focused on now and focused on how to get that messaging right. Um, but I don't think we're entirely there yet. It's not perfect yet, that's for sure. Yeah, well, the, the asking about strategy could be an activist litmus test too to see if a director is involved. Um, so it seems like a logical yeah. one to do. Um, one of the things I think is interesting about this is every company's different, okay, and how they want the board to be involved in strategy, okay? Yep. Some CEOs want boards that are very involved right from the beginning. You know, you have all this experience in the room, I want to tap Take this. Take advantage of it. Yeah. Yep. Others use them more as, a, more as a sounding board. And it's, and it's interesting how the CEO can drive the tone of the board's involvement. involvement yeah. you know, unless somebody stands up and says, we want to be more involved. Yes. Yes, and I think that I think that boards have to sit back and think about that, right? What is their involvement level, and where do they need to push more? Where do they want to get more engaged? Where do they need more information? Um, I mentioned earlier the whole discussion around competitors, and that's one that we're hearing more. The boards are asking for more information about that. Typically, they would get the strategy discussion that says, this is the strategy for this company, and this is what we're going to do. What do you think? But boards are now saying, well, give me the broader landscape. Tell me what some other companies are doing, what our competitors are doing, maybe what new competitors that are coming into the field are gonna to start to do. That'll help me make a better decision. 
So we're hearing more boards, um, not necessarily being involved from the very beginning, but wanting the, the bigger picture overall and not just here's the plan, we need you to approve it and move on. Yeah, it seems like that should be a conversation that should should be early on with a, a board and a CEO. Is yep. What should our, Lead what do you director. want our involvement yep. to be, you know, from both sides mm -hmm. and, and really come to, to a, uh, you know, uh, an agreement on, on what we should be doing. Yeah. It seems like that conversation makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And I, and I do think there's going to be some education. We talked about technology and how important that is and how fast it's changing. So there might even be an education element to understanding the company's strategy. In other words, here's the strategy the company's thinking about, but board, before you can approve this and really look at it, we might have to do a little bit of education to kind of get you up to speed on what's going on from a technology perspective in our business or what the things that we're worried about or what the things are that we think we can do, you know, utilizing technology yeah. that maybe you never would have thought of in your wildest dreams. Yeah. So um, there's more of an education process that needs to be baked into. So um, we have just a second left, but I want to make sure that people know where they can get a copy because you guys do a, such a good job with the different series that you produce. And this one on strategy will be similar to the others um, that you have. So where can somebody make sure that they can get a copy of this? Go right to PwC's Governance Insights Center website and you'll be able to find our new piece on the board's role in strategy. Well, um, there you have it. That's where you find the information. Hopefully we've sparked um, you to have incentive to do that. And Paula, as usual, I want to thank you for supplying great information to our audience. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week here at the Conference Board Studios to help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.